Interrupt our program to bring you this important message. You're listening to Carousel Sniper Victim, a Dead Glass Design production, with your host, Sean Jeffrey. <laughs> this is CNN Breaking News. This is Piers Morgan Live. Breaking news tonight. A Malaysia Airlines plane carrying 239 people bound for Beijing is missing. According to a statement from the airline, air traffic control lost contact with flight MH370 from Kuala Lumpur. Well, here's a problem in the search for the missing Malaysian Airlines jet. A new report from the Australian government uh, suggests teams looking for missing MH370 have almost certainly been looking in the wrong place. The flight vanished nearly three years ago. Remember, it was a routine flight from Malaysia to China. Perhaps the most unsettling fact about the disappearance of Malaysian airline flight 370 is that the morning of its expected arrival, when the world was waking to news that a Boeing 777 had somehow disappeared mid-flight and that the search and rescue efforts were now underway, the plane itself was still flying. Over five hours after it had first disappeared, without making any radio communication or distress signals. Also, whilst we were being told it had gone down possibly over the South China Sea. It was still flying, in completely the opposite direction. All the while, without making any call for help. A modern day ghost ship, or phantom plane if you will. How does a commercial passenger plane, carrying 239 people, suddenly disappear? Especially in our modern age of satellite tracking and constant monitoring. How does a modern commercial plane continue to fly for at least seven hours without any call for help or any alarms being raised. And more importantly, how did no one notice? Malaysia Airlines Flight 370, or MH370, was a scheduled international passenger flight that disappeared on the 8th of March, 2014 while flying from Kuala Lumpur International Airport, Malaysia, to its destination, Beijing Capital International Airport in China. The aircraft was carrying 12 Malaysian crew members and 227 passengers from 15 different nations. Flight MH370 took off from Kuala Lumpur International Airport at 12.42 a.m. local time, en route to Beijing Capital Airport, where it is expected to arrive at 6.30 a.m. local time. At 12.42 a.m., Flight 370 took off from runway 32R and was cleared by air traffic control to climb to flight level 180, approximately 18,000 feet, on a direct path to navigational waypoint Igari. Shortly after departure, the flight was transferred from the airport's air traffic control to Lumpar Radar Air Traffic Control, which handles the communications for outward bound flights. At 12.46am, Lumpar Radar cleared Flight 370 to flight level 350, approximately 35,000 feet. At 1.01am, Flight 370's crew reported to Lumpur Radar that they had reached flight level 350, which they confirmed again at 1.08am. At 1.19am, while flight 370 was over the South China Sea between Malaysia and Vietnam, Malaysia Air Traffic Control instructed flight 370 to contact the next air traffic control in Vietnam. The final voice contact from flight 370 was made when its captain replied, Good night, Malaysia 370. The crew was expected to contact air traffic control in Ho Chi Minh City as the aircraft passed into Vietnamese airspace 
just north of the point where contact was lost. The switchover between air traffic control in Malaysia and air traffic control in Vietnam is a standard part of an international flight. It should have taken all of two seconds. For example, a retired Boeing 777 pilot interviewed on the subject of radio changeover was quoted as saying, it's as simple as, good night Malaysia ATC, click, good morning Ho Chi Minh City, this is MH370. It should have taken all of a few seconds. Two minutes after flight MH370 was supposed to make contact with Vietnamese air traffic control, the aircraft's transponder stopped functioning, causing it to disappear from air traffic control's secondary radar. Secondary radar relies on the reply from the plane's transponder, which is triggered when the radar waves pass over the plane. This is different from military radar, which works by the radar waves being reflected back off the plane itself, and thus does not matter if the transponder is functional or not. The final transponder data indicated that the aircraft was flying at its assigned cruise altitude of flight level 350 and was travelling at approximately 471 knots, all of which was normal. At the moment the transponder stopped functioning, the aircraft was in what is known as a grey zone. This is the crossover area between Malaysian air traffic control and Vietnamese air traffic control. Numerous pilots have been quoted since the event, stating, if you were to plan on hijacking a plane, this is the spot you would want to do it. As this grey zone in the air traffic control crossover point comes with a sort of 5 to 20 minute grace period, in which flights should leave the air traffic control of one region of one operator and enter the airspace and therefore the control of the next air traffic control operator. Basically, good night to one operator and good morning to another. As we've stated, this should happen instantly, but if you don't instantly check in, it's not a huge red flag. However, Flight 370 never checks in. After three to four minutes of complete radio silence and the transponder ceasing to function, this should have raised alarms. However, over 20 minutes pass before Vietnamese air traffic control inform Malaysia that MH370 has not reported in. There were few clouds around this night. The weather reports that there was no rain or lightning nearby the flight path of MH370 either. Later analysis estimated that Flight 370 had approximately 41,500 kilograms or 91,500 pounds of fuel left when its transponder stopped functioning and it disappeared from secondary radar. At the time the transponder stopped functioning, Military radar showed Flight 370 turning right, but then beginning a sharp left turn to a southwesterly direction, back towards the Malaysian Peninsula from which it had just, it had departed. just departed. Malaysian military radar continued to track the aircraft as it turned left, crossed the Malay Peninsula, which it did in about 15 minutes, near the Malaysia-Thailand border. Whilst doing so, MH370 flew almost directly over the military radar installation at Butterworth Radar Station near Penang. It then travelled over the Andaman Sea. At 2.22am, the aircraft now also disappeared 200 nautical miles northwest of Penang. Malaysia Airlines issued a media statement at 7.24am, one hour after the scheduled arrival time of the flight at Beijing, stating that contact with the flight had been lost by Malaysian air traffic control and that the government had initiated search and rescue operations. Neither the crew nor the aircraft's communication systems relayed a distress signal, indications of bad weather or technical problems before the aircraft vanished from radar screens. The only significant clues to the location of Flight 370 after its disappearance from Malaysian military radar at 2.22am came from Inmarsat, a satellite communication company. This crucial data was relayed by the Inmarsat-3 F1 satellite, which was in position above the southern Indian Ocean at the time. The following events were recorded in the log of Inmarsat's ground station at Perth, Western Australia. 
2.25 a.m. The first handshake. A handshake is basically a technical term for a signal sent between the plane and the Inmarsat satellite, ensuring that timing and other functions important to maintaining communication with the satellite is upheld. Basically, a logon request initiated by aircraft to the satellite. 2.39 a.m. Ground to aircraft telephone call. Acknowledged by the aircraft satellite data unit, but the call goes unanswered. 3.41 a.m. Second handshake initiated by the ground station. 4.41 a.m. Third handshake initiated by ground station. 5.41 a.m. Fourth handshake initiated by ground station. 6.41 a.m. Fifth handshake initiated by ground station. 7.13 a.m. Ground to aircraft telephone call. Acknowledged by the aircraft's satellite data unit, but the call again goes unanswered. 8.10 a.m. Another attempt at a six handshake initiated by ground station. 8.19 a.m. Seventh handshake initiated by aircraft. This is the final form of any transmission from flight MH370. The aircraft did not respond to the next satellite ping at 9.15 a.m. Since the aircraft did not respond to a ping at 9.15 a.m., it can be concluded that at some point between 8.19 a.m. and 9.15 a.m., the aircraft lost the ability to communicate with the ground station. At 8.19, the aircraft had been airborne for 7 hours and 38 minutes. The typical Kuala Lumpur to Beijing flight is five and a half hours. Keep in mind, this is now around an hour after the press conference that the plane has gone down and search and rescue efforts are underway. Also, around two hours after the scheduled arrival time in Beijing, the plane is still flying, either in a corridor of airspace heading south into the Indian Ocean or north into the Asian mainland later narrowed down to the southern corridor. As the handshakes or pings used by the satellite are only able to establish the connection is still there and active in case it is needed, it contains no information regarding direction, speed or altitude of the plane, only that the plane was still active and travelling at this time. Only through measuring the time it took for the signal to reach the plane and bounce back did the satellite engineers determine a rough search area to begin the search and rescue efforts. The multinational search effort for MH370 is the largest and most expensive in aviation history. The search began in the Gulf of Thailand and the South China Sea, where the aircraft signal was last detected on secondary surveillance radar and was soon extended to the Strait of Malacca and the Andaman Sea. On the 24th of March, the Malaysian government noted that the final location determined by the satellite communication is far from any possible landing sites and concluded that, quote, flight MH370 ended in the southern Indian Ocean. Analysis of satellite communication between the aircraft and Inmarsat satellite communication network concluded that the flight continued until at least 8.19 a.m and flew south into the southern Indian Ocean, although the precise location cannot be determined yet. From October 2014 through to January 2017, a comprehensive survey of 120,000 square kilometres or 46,000 square miles of seafloor off the southwestern coast of Australia yielded no evidence of the aircraft. Several pieces of marine debris found off the coast of Africa and on Indian Ocean Islands off the coast of Africa, the first of which discovered on the 29th of July 2015 on Reunion Island have been confirmed as pieces of Flight 370. However, the bulk of the aircraft has still not been located, prompting many theories about its disappearance. The recent murder of Zahir Raza, Malaysia's honorary consul in Madagascar, who was gunned down in the capital Antanarivo on August 24th of 2017, was in the process of arranging transportation for pieces of suspected wreckage from MH370 to Malaysia for investigation. Quote, 
Police investigations are still ongoing. We don't know whether it's linked to MH370 or not. 20 passengers, 12 of whom were from Malaysia and 8 from China, were all employees of Freescale Semiconductor, which had interests from such big name players as the Carlyle and Blackstone groups. Two passengers travelling on board MH370 were using stolen passports. In the days after the incident, an image surfaced online, apparently taken by a passenger aboard the doomed flight. EXIF data, which is embedded into digital images, can show the geographical location that a photo was taken. The photo's EXIF data claims that the photo was sent from a location in the Indian Ocean, a small group of islands around a natural lagoon known as Diego Garcia, a US military installation in the Indian Ocean which sources claim the pilot's home flight simulator also had directions to. The pilot's wife is claimed to have left him in the hours before the doomed flight, prompting many to believe this may have led him to crash the doomed flight. Malaysian officials have stated that a final report on Flight 370 will be released by the end of 2017. Now let's try and break all of this down piece by piece and figure out what the fuck it really all means. So where do we begin, hey? Does your head hurt as much as mine does? What a fucking trippy crazy story eh? like and this is just the beginning we're gonna break this whole thing down bit by bit because it's there's so much in like there's so much information to digest in there about satellite pings and handshakes and turned west or southwest here after going here and a lot of it could just it gets to the point where you're like what what the fuck, what the fuck happened but yeah so Next episode, which I'm going to put out basically right after I upload this one, because we wanted this whole thing to be one big packet where you can listen to this first little timeline, but then also get the rest of it. But it's going to be about an hour and 40 minutes or something, just the next bit. So yeah, cheers to Lee for the sound. I really like the sound. It was fucking dope, I thought, in this one. Um, cheers to Jack for hanging around for the next episode. And uh yeah, check out deadglassesiron.com and carouselsniperevictim.com and we're going to go out with this song by my mate Max Shane who's a fucking skits artist from Perth here and his album's out. You can go check it out wherever. Fucking go check out Max Shane. I'll drop a link in the show notes and that so you can go get his album if you actually like the song. But yeah, I hit him up because I was like, oh bro, you got that lyric that's fucking MH370 so honey pee chucking it in the end of this episode. So yeah, we'll catch you all later dudes. Peace. <laughs> You're just a lone wolf, can't find no friends You want to impress? Try show them You're a Shetland pony in a rhino pen Fix your mistakes with your biro pen Hop out the matrix, buy those meds Put a bit of truth in your Milo blend You want that's not advice, what would I know then? Cause you're all okay, synthetic okay. like Teflon twine Lock you out when I get online Mind your moves but don't step on mine There's a red alert I guess death can't fight When we cross paths and we intersect I'm not the last to show disrespect You drop a bar and I'm discontent I cut the cord and you disconnect Everybody wanna be the top MC no one in my city put work like me 24-7, 365, gave that time Play that line, now run this scene Cause I made that right No hidden fears, I've done in months with you did in years I've come to hunt and you disappeared Watch the throne while I'm sitting here Cause your time is up, you had 15 minutes Line you up against 16 mimics Send a prayer to those 16 spirits I'm back on track for that pristine finish Give time the mark just like Seiko Swimming tiger sharks and those Makos Yeah, I broke them all with no Play-Doh Yeah, I found a key with no grace note So no one move till I say so When I'm throwing shade, you better lay low See, I'm shelling down with that payload There's a massacre, it's not Waco Everybody wanna be the top MC no one in my city put in work like me 24-7, 365, gave that time Play that line, now run this scene Cause I made that right I get it, I know you're a loner Something's fishy like a nose in the odour I'm known to be pro overloading the quota You only got the show cause you blow the promoter Press escape and don't save the data I run the game and you play the beta I made the cut and you'll make it later Your tofu, that's a waste of flavour <laughs> Place a bet, yeah, dare I lose Break a sweat, yeah, dare I move Set the match, yeah, where I choose I get them gas like airline food Take your time, you hate me readily Use your side, I'm aiming steadily Talking tongues, you ain't speak pedigree The mic up, it's an MH370 Everybody wanna be the top MC
Gave that time, paid that life, now run this scene